Welcome to the Daily History Podcast, where every day we dust off the pages of the past to bring history alive. Today, we'll navigate through the smoky backdrops of Stuart, England, and unravel the threads of one of the most infamous conspiracies ever conceived, the Gunpowder Plot. So tighten your cloaks and hold your lanterns high as we venture into the shadowy corridors of rebellion and intrigue. The turn of the 17th century saw England under the rule of the Stuarts, a period marked by stark political and religious divisions. The country had emerged from the clashing tides of the Tudor reign, where the Reformation had introduced Protestantism, firmly steering society away from the Catholic Church's influence. But beneath the surface, tensions bubbled as many English citizens remained loyal to their Catholic faith. In the year 1603, a new monarch rose to power, King James I of England, the former James VI of Scotland. This was no ordinary transition. It was the union of two crowns as James inherited the English throne after the passing of Queen Elizabeth I. His ascension was initially met with hopes of unity and tolerance. However, these aspirations were short-lived as James, though once the ruler of Catholic Scotland, upheld and enforced the Protestant faith. The air of England filled with unease as Catholics found themselves increasingly marginalized. Their worship was deemed illegal and penalties for recusancy or refusing to attend Protestant services were both costly and severe. Plots and rebellions began to simmer as desperation grew among those who yearned to practice their religion freely. It is within this powder keg of repression and resentment that our tale of the gunpowder plot takes root where a group of men would soon cast a long shadow over the annals of British history. In the early 1600s, amidst the simmering unrest of Stuart England, a group of men began to weave a plot that would echo through the annals of history. The tapestry of this scheme was crafted by none other than Robert Catesby, a man whose name is often overshadowed by his infamous associate, Guy Fawkes. Catesby was the charismatic and impassioned ringleader whose personal grievances against the throne had festered into a revolutionary zeal. Born into a family staunch in their Catholic faith, Catesby's resentment grew as he witnessed the oppressive measures levied upon his religious kin under the Protestant monarchy. Guy Fawkes, whose notoriety has burned steadily over the centuries, was a former military man with a knack for explosives. His adventures across Europe had seasoned him into a hardened and adept warrior, fiercely loyal to the Catholic cause. Fox's dedication and expertise in munitions were the linchpins that would later define the very crux of the gunpowder plot. Both men shared the conviction that drastic action was needed to restore Catholic power in England, a conviction that would soon attract others to their perilous cause. As the conspiracy's blueprint took shape, Catesby sought out like-minded individuals to fill the ranks of his rebellion. Among them were notable figures such as Thomas Percy, a man of action angered by the broken promises of King James to the Catholic elite. There was also Thomas Wintour, a well-traveled and educated conspirator who brought his worldly insights to the plotters' councils. Together with a cadre of fellow dissidents, including John Wright, Thomas Bates, and Robert Keyes, they formed the core group behind what would become known as the Gunpowder Plot, each driven by their shared desire to kindle a religious and political revolution. As autumn's chill wrapped itself around London in 1605, England was a keg of gunpowder itself, fraught with religious tension. At the heart of the nation's capital, a group of men were plotting an explosion that would change the course of history. The gunpowder plot, as it would later be known, was not just a plan for destruction, but also a symbolic act of defiance against King James I and his Protestant government. The architectural mastermind of the plot was one Robert Catesby, a charismatic figure with a personal vendetta against the state. His resentment stemmed from punitive measures against Catholics and Catesby dreamed of a future where these injustices were reversed. Alongside him was the infamous Guy Fawkes, a man whose expertise with explosives made him pivotal to their dark aspirations. Together, they gathered a band of discontented souls 
and whispered conspiracies turned into concrete plans. Over many months, these conspirators meticulously arranged for 36 barrels of gunpowder to be hidden in a cellar beneath the House of Lords, the very heart of British governance. This was no mean feat. Every barrel had to be transported and concealed with utmost secrecy, for any slip could lead to a premature spark that would ignite their downfall. The target was set for the 5th of November, 1605, during the state opening of Parliament, where the king himself would be in attendance. The plotters envisioned a fiery annihilation of the political landscape, an event set to redraw the lines of power. The stage was set, the pieces all in place, and the fate of a nation hung in the balance. Tension reached fever pitch as the night of reckoning approached. London, oblivious to the peril that lurked beneath its cobblestone streets, continued its nightly slumber. But one of the conspirators, fraught with worry for an innocent who might be caught in the blast, sent an anonymous letter of warning. This act of conflicted loyalty was the thread that began to unravel the meticulously woven tapestry of treachery. The letter found its way to the king's chief minister, and suspicion cast an all-seeing eye upon Westminster. In the darkest hours before dawn, guards conducted a search of the cellars and found Guy Fawkes, a figure shrouded in shadow, ready to light the fuse that would send tremors through the annals of time. He was seized on the spot, and the nefarious plans of Catesby and his cohorts were laid bare beneath the unforgiving gaze of lantern light. With the plot foiled mere hours before its cataclysmic climax, England averted a disaster of unfathomable proportions. The morning light of November 5th dawned not with the echoes of an explosion, but with the stunned silence of a plot uncovered and a tragedy narrowly escaped. The flames of treason had flickered and failed, but their smoldering embers would forever leave a mark on the fabric of British history. As November of 1605 drew to a close, a sense of eager anticipation permeated the air. The state opening of Parliament was imminent, an occasion where King James I would address the Assembly. It was against this backdrop of expectancy that the gunpowder plot approached its climax. Beneath the House of Lords, 36 barrels of gunpowder lay concealed, ready to ignite a rebellion that would shake the foundations of the English monarchy. The man entrusted with this lethal task, Guy Fawkes, was an experienced soldier, well-versed in the art of explosives. In the deep of night, on the eve of the state's opening, Fawkes prepared to light the fuse that would obliterate the ruling elite. But the conspiracy was unraveling. An anonymous letter had found its way to Lord Monteagle, warning him to avoid the opening. Monteagle, stricken by the looming danger, alerted the authorities. Skeptical yet cautious, King James ordered a search of the parliamentary cellars. It was during the late hours of November 4th that the royal guards descended into the bowels of the parliament building. There, clothed in a dark cloak, stood Guy Fawkes, guarding the explosives that could have altered the course of history. Fawkes was arrested, and the plot was foiled mere hours before it was set to unfold. The impact was immediate and profound. News of the thwarted plot spread rapidly, igniting a mixture of relief among the populace and dread within the ranks of those who had sought to challenge the crown. The immediate repercussions were severe for the plotters, but the ripple effects extended far beyond those directly involved. The gunpowder plot not only reinforced King James's power, but also brought about a harsh crackdown on dissent, particularly for Catholics, and led to more stringent laws that would shape the religious and political landscape of England for years to come. Amid the smoke and debris of the foiled gunpowder plot, the consequences were swift and unforgiving, particularly for the surviving conspirators. Beyond the immediate circle, the Catholic community of Stuart, England faced dire repercussions. The kingdom was a quagmire of suspicion and recrimination, and although many of the plotters met their end at the gallows, the echo of their betrayal rang out, reaching the ears and doors of Catholics across the land. The aftermath of the plot saw a tightening vice of control and surveillance instituted by the government of King James I. In the wake of the treachery, 
the English Parliament enacted laws that placed the Catholic population under a magnifying glass of scrutiny and restriction. 1606 bore witness to the enactment of the Popish Recusants Act, which penalized anyone refusing to attend Anglican services and hampered the rights of Catholics to practice their faith openly. This legislative hammer cast a long shadow, deepening the divide between Anglicans and Catholics. Society itself, it seemed, had been irreversibly altered. The dust of paranoia settled heavily upon England's collective consciousness, with neighbor becoming wary of neighbor. In every corner of public life, fear had taken root, and it fed on whispers of dissent and the potential for treason. The suspicion was not only reserved for those who practiced Catholicism, but extended to anyone who may have harbored sympathy for their plight, or simply a grudge against the crown. The gunpowder plot, though unsuccessful in its intended goals, had managed to sow discord well beyond its circle, breeding a culture of fear that would linger for years to come. As the smoke cleared after the foiled gunpowder plot, England found itself in the grips of a cultural reckoning. The legacy of November 5, 1605, continued well beyond the immediate repercussions faced by those involved. It marked the birth of a tradition that resonates to this modern day, the establishment of Guy Fawkes Night, commonly known as Bonfire Night. This annual commemoration began out of a mix of relief and nationalistic fervor. The very next year, in 1606, the observance of 5th November Act was passed, mandating public thanksgiving for the plot's failure. What began as formal state recognition quickly took root in the cultural fabric of Britain. Guy Fawkes Night evolved from solemn observances to a more festive atmosphere, where effigies of Guy Fawkes, the most notable face of the plot, are burned on bonfires. Fireworks light the skies, symbolizing the explosives that never detonated. The gunpowder plot's tendrils reached beyond the annual festivities, weaving itself into popular culture and historical memory. Literature, cartoons, and eventually films have portrayed and sometimes romanticized the conspirators, with Guy Fawkes often depicted as a symbol of anti-establishment sentiment. V for Vendetta, a graphic novel and subsequent film, particularly elevated Guy Fawkes's image as a rebel icon in the 21st century, introducing a new generation to a very old legend. Today, perceptions of Guy Fawkes' night vary greatly. Some see it as a celebration of British history and parliamentary democracy's triumph over anarchy, while others perceive it as a reminder of government oppression, particularly regarding how Catholics were treated following the plot. In many ways, the evening serves as a canvas, reflecting broader trends and changes in societal attitudes over time. The modern celebration of the event continues to spark debate, prompting people to contemplate the line between dissent and loyalty and the complex fabric of national identity. As we draw the curtains on today's episode, let us look back at the pivotal moments that have shaped our understanding of the gunpowder plot. It was in the year 1605 that Robert Catesby, Guy Fawkes, and their associates, fueled by a desire to restore Catholic power, schemed to detonate explosives beneath the Houses of Parliament. Their audacious intent was to eradicate the Protestant government and King James I. The plot stands as a stark reminder of the lengths to which individuals will go when driven by deep-seated belief and unyielding political agendas. The plot's revelation on November 5th not only condemned the conspirators, but also dealt a decisive blow to the Catholic community in England, leading to decades of increased persecution and further entrenching religious divisions. This incident offers a lens through which we can examine the volatile interplay between governance and subversion, illuminating the complexities of ruling amid religious and political unrest. Reflecting upon the legacy of the gunpowder plot, we're now cognizant of its lasting historical weight. It not only shaped stringent policies and vigilant statecraft, but also, in time, ignited a cultural phenomenon. With the inception of Guy Fawkes Night, the failed conspiracy evolved into an emblem of national identity, forever etching November 5th into British collective memory. Our journey today compels us to ponder on the essential nature of dissent 
and the extremities at which it can erupt. From the silent murmurings in the underbelly of Stuart society to the resounding echoes in today's world, the gunpowder plot persists as a testament to the indomitable human spirit in pursuit of change, however misguided. As we reach our episode's end, we hope to have shed light on this incendiary chapter of history and its indelible impression on the tapestry of time. In our retelling, may we continue to glean insights from our forebears' trials and tribulations, for within them lies wisdom that transcends eras, reminding us of the ceaseless dialogue between the past and present. Thank you for joining us on this historical journey through shadows and whispers. If today's tale of intrigue has captured your imagination, please subscribe for more episodes of the Daily History Podcast. Share your thoughts on the gunpowder plot in the comments below and suggest the historical mysteries you wish uncovered next. The suggestion with the most likes will spark our curiosity for a future episode. Stay curious and keep the lantern of history alight until our next adventure into the past.